Hello everyone, welcome back to Jenny LeClue, Detective Who. Last time, a great few things actually happened. Um, let's see, we went to the library, and we found not our mom, but a dead body. Dean Gumbolt's dead body. And from what I remember, we investigated the scene, concluded it was a murder of some kind, I think. And then we tried to follow the killer only to find that the killer escaped, we are going unconscious, and our mom is now arrested. And now we're trapped in this pink paradise here. Yeah. Let's seek a way out. I love you! I love you! You're my best friend! You scared the life out of me, pig! Alrighty then. Also, can I gush again about how beautiful this game looks? Just look at it. Seriously. This... I can't run. This pink environment is so amazing. And even that blue thing there to contrast it, like... <sighs> the sun was setting behind the great mountains of Arthurton. Like, did this game always look this good? Or is it like because it was ports to switch everything out, it got a nice touch up, like, seriously. Cradling the town in a warm red embrace. I slept the whole day away? I have to get out of here and make up for lost time. Ah yes, the Arthurian um thing. All the Crystals. dangly bits are swaying. Strange. It's not windy in here. Best in show, horse ballet. First prize and horse? best table etiquette? Horse ballet. There's one here for best smile. Seriously? Advanced table etiquette? I mean, actually think about now, what exactly is so important about table etiquette? I mean, I guess it's, you know, to make sure that you're not looked at as like a savage or you're not, or, or you're not making anyone uncomfortable, but like, I might guess that's it? Whatever. Anyways, um. Seriously, who has windows this big? Who even has windows this big, legitimately? Below, Lake Nowhere stretched out as far as the eye could see. In the distance, Jenny could just make out the great lighthouse on Skull Island. It's foggy out there tonight. That is. Uh, Havoc at Heroes Memorial, huh? Interesting. Let's see. What should have been a farewell. Was tarnished by poorly timed act of protest. And an ocean was double trouble with witness shouting at members, causing damage and even desecrating the corpse. Girl was called and collapsed and carried from the premises. <sighs> well, I guess it was. What was it? I guess it was some random kid that loved him. Oh well. Hundreds gathered. Community was devastated last Thursday. Wait, what? Devastated last Thursday, now it's Monday? Really? Interesting. St Gumbolt? No, it was Strasbury. Why, why do I keep getting his name wrong? Seriously. Anyways. The murder was, was the first time they had seen it in decades. Uh, an anonymous tip made him arrive and found a woman covered in blood. What are you talking about? She wasn't covered in blood. Hmm. Alright. I guess let's just see. What is this? The only way out is... The only way up is out. The only way forward is down. What? Okay. I don't remember any of this. I bet that kid's in a lot of trouble. Oh yeah. Certainly. Pushed from the balcony? That's not what happened. And no mention of electrocution. Well, I mean, to be fair, we did. I mean, to be fair, we did kind of just say what he was electrocuted. Mom wasn't covered in blood. That's a lie. Ah, lovely embellishing. Jenny thought of her poor mother, locked away in a jail cell for a crime she didn't commit. Don't worry, Mom. I'll prove you didn't do it as soon as I get out of here. All right, Either this then. is shoddy reporting, or someone is trying to cover up what really happened. 
My mom's still in jail, so the police must not think this was an accident. And if it wasn't an accident, then... The real killer is still out there! Hmm. Well, that's not very good. Is this On here... On the other side of the lake, beyond the Forgotten Forest, sat a more modest house. No fancy windows or crystal chandeliers. Just a small wooden frame in need of painting. Home. Oh. What's inside here? I've never seen so many clothes. Maybe mine are in here somewhere. Yeah, no. Well, my clothes definitely aren't here. They'd be easy to spot amongst all the sequins and ribbons. Jeez, how many trophies can you... Or how many trophies can you earn? Seriously. Oh. Oh, a sticker. That's actually pretty clever of them. Hmm. <sighs> Alright then. Anyways, does all of this, it's actually, um, it has something to do with that, why I just looked at that there. This mirror looks rather mirror similar. For the lady who loves herself. This mirror looks rather similar to the thing we just saw. The disc. Clever, I know. Ouch! That's hot! Anyways, what we gotta do here is if we turn this off... That's more fun than it should be. We can turn... And as you see, that one's still on. Hmm. There's something strange about this mirror. This requires further investigation. And yeah, this this is like my favorite part of the game, so I've done this multiple times. Let's see if I can get the order right. Uh, the only ones that need to be on are from the center, move to, and in either direction then skip three and that's it everything else I think that's it I think this is it let me go back to the disc and see it's a bit weird to think you can't run like that's weird to me but eh, whatever anyways Uh, from the center, it's, okay, so from the center, from the above center, it's two, from the below center, it's two, yes. So, let's see, I think that's right, no. From the above center, it's two, and from the below center, it is two. I think that's about right. Alrighty then. This family's disposable income is outrageous. I always knew they were hiding something. I bet there are all kinds of horrific secrets lurking up there. You know, funnily enough, it's weird that no one actually noticed a giant rectangular sized hole in the top of the wall, like seriously. Cause it's like, how exactly you don't notice that? But then again, no one ever actually looks up at their ceiling most of the time anyways. Alright, so what's here exactly? I guess another piece. A sticker. Okay. I don't know why they didn't choose to include stickers there, but whatever. Oh, it's just a dusty old attic. Dozens of old boxes covered in dust and cobwebs, filled with toys, school projects, and old trophies. Attics, where dreams go to die. What's up here? Aha! A way out of here! Lock. 
locked. But where is the lock? Huh. All right then. I guess let's just head in the other direction. Pull cord. Oh. Oh, hello, spooky bear. Feels like he's watching me. Right. Well then, uh, what is this? Everything in here is covered in dust, except this bear. Oh. And there's light coming from behind him. Is what there? What are you hiding, spooky bear? Smothered by a giant teddy bear. What an end that would have been. Just as I suspected. Stairs. Staircase. Where do they lead? Oh, great. You know, see, that's why I don't understand. Why do they, ha like, have these gallery items and such, like, just here to break the tension? Like, sure, they only take, like, a second or two to find, but, like... Seriously? They're still breaking up every... thing. Jenny was no stranger to the labs at Gumboldt, but she'd never seen anything quite like this. Certainly not inside someone's house. Hey! What are you doing up here? Susie Glass. Loved by all, kind to a fault. Jenny's cousin was also the most popular girl in town. Cousin? Yeah? That's why she's here? The, oh, that's... Huh. You know, somehow I don't remember hearing that somehow. Huh. And I guess that's... Um... Yeah, I think Jenny's mom did say like something about her cousin. thing. I forgot that she was her cousin, legitimately. Hmm. Uh, hi, Jenny. Er, uh, um, y you... You should be in bed resting. What are you doing up here? I should ask you the same question. Right, uh, what exactly is this lab? What is all this equipment? And why is there a secret elevator running from your room to the attic? Oh, you must mean my collection of teddy bears. Collection of teddy bears. <sighs> sure. I'll bite. I see. My apologies then. But tell me one thing, Susan. Why is that teddy bear wearing a welding helmet? Well, um, there's a simple explanation for that. There are just too many to fit in my bedroom. <sighs> okay. You know what? Let's, uh, let's try that again. Susie, clearly something's weighing heavily on your mind. Take a deep breath and answer the question honestly. I promise you'll feel better. It's not what you think. This is where I, um, er, teddy bears. I have vintage bears, new bears, rare collectible bears. Enough. Stop avoiding the question. <laughs> All right, let's gain her trust. You don't need to hide anything. You can be honest with me. <laughs> no, that's the very thing you don't be honest about. I can't. You wouldn't understand. Try me. Susie's secret was the kind you took to the grave. A shameful, dark secret. A secret so shocking she feared she would lose everything. Her friends would abandon her. Her family would disown her. She'd never find true love. Oh God, I'm going to die alone. Ugh. You can't tell anyone. You have to promise me. Yeah, sure, why not? Fine, just stop whimpering like a lost puppy. You're embarrassing yourself. <sighs> Here goes nothing.
This is my secret laboratory. Where I design and test my inventions. Yeah, that makes sense. Your laboratory. Where you invent things. Yes. I thought I said buy it. You. A cheerleading, horse riding, dress wearing debutante. Yes. I want to believe you, Susie, but you know how crazy that sounds. That's why you can't tell anyone. If people found out, I'd lose everything. Well, I'm pretty sure they're not even going to believe it, to be honest. Could it be true? Susie Glatt's, in fact, a secret nerd genius. Well, I mean, yeah, she was here welding something, was obviously. She really leading a double life? There's only one way to find out. Susan Quincy Glatz, I'm gonna have to ask you a few questions. Quincy? Hmm. Alright, it's been a while since we did one of these. What is this? Oh. Did she legit try to hide that in her hair? Pink bows, fluffy bears, stylish clothes. She can't possibly be a scientist. Do you really expect me to believe that you aren't obsessed with boy bands in the color pink? What? What? Rain okay. or bimbo? Which one is it? <laughs> That's actually a really funny question to ask. <laughs> I am a scientist. But I also believe in the importance of good skin care and the power of matching accessories. You sound ridiculous. Susie couldn't be pretty, popular, and smart. That was just... greedy. Right. What is this? Gumbolt Moonbeams, Head Shearleader. A Gumbolt pin. The Dean was wearing one the day he died. Could Susie have played a part in the Dean's death? All of Jenny's instincts told her it wasn't possible, but she needed to know for sure. Let's have some tact. Better to have these things in here. What perfume is that? Uh, oh, thanks. It's called Innocent. Yeah, just random question. Just I like remember that. you were wearing it last Thursday at the lake. I was. What did you do that day? After you left? Peggy and I took Veronica home. She was really upset. And you were there all afternoon? Yes. Why? How close is Veronica's house to the library? I don't understand. Why do you want to know all this? I need to rule you out as a suspect. Suspect? Why would I be a suspect? You're certainly very good at keeping secrets. <clears throat> I didn't do anything. Just ask Peggy or Veronica. I don't know why you're friends with them. They are terrible character witnesses. First Veronica, then Keith, and now me. I never thought I'd say this, but sometimes you can be a real... jerk. What were you saying about Keith? Well, you didn't exactly make things easier for him, did you? You don't remember, do you? Oh, well, I suppose it wasn't that bad. What do you mean? After you interrupted the Reverend Eulogy, hmm? and after Keith asked you to stop, you tripped and knocked over the Dean's casket. And I guess they hadn't secured the lid properly, because he rolled right out. To horrify gasps. Yeah. As you collapsed and fell into his open grave. And that's why everyone's so worried about you. It all came flooding back. She had tried to defend her mom and repair her relationship with Keith. Instead, she had ruined everything. Jenny had lost her best friend. You should talk to Keith. I'm sure he'll forgive you. Yeah. Because anyone would forgive it if one of their friends literally didn't tell that didn't tell them their dad it's was killed and then knocked his body it's out. My mom killed his dad. She felt the distance between them grow with every passing minute. How could she face him without answers? I have to find the Dean's real killer. <sighs> All right then. What else do we even have? Oh. All this stuff looks authentic, but that doesn't mean it belongs to Susie. Oh, maybe she's the only person in here. If this is really your lab, what does that thing do? That's Tim. He's a thermal imaging machine. He uses reflective thermographic projections to infer death-related topography in subsurface bodies. Come again? 
He lets you see inside stuff. Hmm. Well, what about that thing? That's Judy Kate, a gamma ray induction polygraph. And that? Hydraulically propelled telemetric manipulator. It's just say it's the lever. And this? That's a tea set. But I like to drink tea. How did you get all this stuff up here anyway? And without being seen, you'd be surprised how much you can hide in a giant stuffed teddy bear. I know what's going on here. You've stolen all this stuff. And you're planning to sell it all to buy more fluffy cushions or pink horses or something. I didn't steal anything. Some of the parts are from my father's factory. The rest I bought with my allowance. That's some allowance. If you didn't steal it, why are you worried about people finding out? I'm head cheerleader. I'm captain of the equestrian team. If the other girls knew about this, they'd laugh me all the way to the back of the cafeteria. I mean, they can't exactly laugh when you got a giant ray gun pointing at them now, can you? Can they? Why do you care what they think? It's not just them. If my parents found out about my lab, they'd kill me. Why? Don't they want you to be a scientist? I think they'd like me to marry a scientist. Dad says science is a man's job. Girls are supposed to bake pies and become prom queen. Ugh. Everyone in Arthurton is stuck in the past. If anyone else showed him the things I've created, he'd call them a genius and make them his lead scientist. So tell him. Prove him wrong. I... I just can't. You have to keep my secret. I'm begging you, Jenny. Poor Susie. All of her secrets laid bare. Jenny couldn't help but feel... Disgusted. Maybe there was more to Susie than she had first presumed. Hmm. Right. Is there anything else? Oh, yeah, Seeing look at that. textbooks strewn about the floor reminded Jenny of something. My journal! I need to get my stuff back. Where are my clothes? Oh, Gerald took them. Who the hell is Gerald? Our butler. Of course you have a butler. He's taken them to be cleaned and pressed. They'll be ready in a few days. Well, I need them. Now. I've got a dress that would be perfect for you. It's got purple bows, and the sequence will really bring out the color of your eyes. <sighs> no, thank you. I'd rather be burned to death. No one's gonna take me seriously in a purple ball gown. And where's my other stuff? Don't tell me Gerald's got my journal. It's irreplaceable. Like I'd let that nosy old fool see your diary. It's not a diary. It's my case notes. Right, of course. A girl's gotta have a place to keep her secrets. I put all your stuff in the lockbox under my pillows. Are you kidding me? No wonder my head hurts. Jenny was confident that Susie wasn't involved in the Dean's murder. She wasn't evil. Just insufferable. All right, I'm gonna grab my stuff and get out of here. Oh, while you're wandering around, can you find some parts for me? I need a battery and a transistor to finish this device. What? No! I did something for you. It was true. Susie had kept Jenny's journal safe. And the Dean's ring. She'd even revealed her darkest secret to Jenny. Fine! Enough already! What's a transistor? Oh! It's an electronic voltage regulator that... Just tell me what it looks like. It's a tiny metal object with an antenna and three legs. If you can't find one in my bedroom, there are some old boxes in the attic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Transistor and battery. Go, Go Jenny! I've got to get out of here. <sighs> right. Well, fortunately, I know each where each of those are. And I still find it weird that we can't run or anything. Seriously. I guess we'll get the battery first, because it's, it's the furthest. Um, let's see here. There's only one thing down here that's actually battery operated. That being... I'm sorry, Mr. Pig, but I need your batteries. I love you! I love you! This will only hurt for a second. Yeah, you can just pry open the back and then... Thank you, Pig, for donating your body to science. Actually, yeah, couldn't... Well, couldn't you just, like, rip open the, like, underside of it and then just stick your hand through and then place it back? That way it doesn't look like it's broken. Now where can I find a transistor? Oh, well. 
Anyways, transistors are back upstairs. Bunch of old science fair projects. They had all been submitted by Anonymous. And they'd all won first prize. If it was submitted by Anonymous, how exactly did you bring it back? These awards should be hanging on the walls downstairs. It was sad to see all these marvelous accomplishments hidden away in the attic. Susie wanted so badly to please her parents, to live up to their expectations of what a Glatz girl should be. She never even told them she'd entered the science fairs. Actually thinking about it now, what exactly is she gonna do when they have to come clean the attic? Like oh. a oh. tiny metal object with an antenna and three legs. Looks like a transistor to me. That's Susie's stuff taken care of. But I still haven't found my own. She said it was under the pillow in her bed. Oh yeah, right, the journal. I forgot to get that. Alright then. Let's just go back down and look for it. You know, funnily enough, I don't know why, but this is legitimately my favorite part of the game. Like, I don't... I don't even know why. It's like... Hmm. Alright, so... Under this. Ooh! Let's see. Stars, lips, hearts, and beakers. What would a girl like Susie use as a password? Easy. The beakers. Oh, it's another one of these. Okay. I guess let's do this. These go in opposite directions, right? So if I do this... Yeah. Okay. So I guess what we'll do is... Oh. Of course it was the beakers. Clever. Jenny hid the ring in her pocket and flipped through the pages of her journal. No obvious signs of tampering. At least Susie knows how to mind her own business. I'll give her the battery and transistor, and then I'll find a way out of this place. All right. And we got our journal back. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, let's see what our choosiness level is. Back to CEO. It was adventure before, but okay. Um... Bird glass donut, okay. Let's see. Answering truthfully. Uh, didn't take evidence. Ask Susie about the laboratory. Diplomatic, good cop. Believe this was Susie's lab. Huh, so I guess because we were nice, we got a CEO option, huh? That's good then, I guess. Still have a lot more to go though. Oh well. Let us head back up, so now that we have everything. I guess we'll go for another like 20 more minutes or so. Cause I know what next part has, and yeah, it's uh it is something. Let us rush along. Rush along, what I what I just say, yeah. Now, back to the task at hand. Making my escape. Don't you want to know what these parts are for? Only if it will help me get out of here. Ah! Careful! That's a stick of dynamite! Why do you have dynamite? Are you crazy? You could have blown me to bits. I mean, there's nothing to light it, but why do you even have dynamite? I did say be careful. What are you making bombs for? They're not bombs. They're silent explosives. Why are you making silent explosives? Silent explosives? Think about it. Dynamite that doesn't make a sound. That sounds rather dangerous when put in the wrong hands. Matter of fact, I don't think there are any right hands to put that in either. Actually, wouldn't, it st wouldn't, wouldn't the whatever got blasted the bits still make a sound? 
If you blow up a wall, isn't the pebbles and whatever else gonna make sounds? I mean... Impossible, you say? Not at all. My first breakthrough came when I discovered the unique properties of... I can use this to blow my way out of here! Um, the explosion might be silent, but I think my mom would notice if part of the house was missing. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, thanks for the show and tell, but it's time for me to go. And how exactly are you going to leave without being seen? I'm glad you asked, Susan. I'll be making my exit through the window in the attic. Once I found a way to unlock it... Oh, you're out of luck there. My parents are super security conscious. All the windows are locked electromagnetically. Where are the controls? Downstairs, in Dad's study. And I can't get there without being seen. Is there some kind of override? It's impossible to open them from up here, unless there was a total power failure. Well then, I know exactly <laughs> what to do. Okay, well, I'll be here if you need help. Just like what we did before. Time for the case of escaping glass matter. Let's look around. Complex formulas filled the large chalkboard. Clearly the work of a genius. Okay, she's secretly smart. We get it. What is all this anyway? Oh, that? I'm working on a proof to help me pick the perfect prom dress. You've got to be kidding me. I know, I know. I'm not sure it can be done either. But I've got to try. It's the biggest decision a girl has to make. Gross. Right. Well, well, that, well that's going on. Um, I think the only other important thing I can think of is... Judy, I think? Hmm. Judy, Kate. Saved just now. Let's go to the gallery quickly, because... We've been picking up everything. I don't exactly know what we've unlocked. Like... Okay, I guess just art and such. I guess we'll like go through everything, see what we found at like the end of the game. Huh. Oh well. It does feel a bit weird that... Yeah, see it does feel a bit weird that none of them actually get like... What's the word? Hmm. Sorry, I'm just looking here. It does feel a bit weird that no one actually gets like a... Uh actual, like, dialogue and such. Hmm. Oh, well. Because I remember these attorney ones gave you, like, bits and pieces of, like, dialogue with their con with their concept art, so... Eh. Alright, then. Hmm. Oh, well. What is this now? What does this machine do? That's Judy Kate. She's a portable lie detector. Portable? It's 18 feet tall and bolted to the floor. Yeah, well, I'm still working on that part. But she can detect a lie with 98% accuracy. 98? That's quite a claim. Let's see. Good evening, small human child. I am Judy Kate, arbiter of truth, detector of lies. Since this is the first time we have met, I will need to calibrate. To begin, please answer this simple question. What is the meaning of life? What? How am I supposed to answer that? Ha. 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 Just kidding. Oh, sorry. I've been experimenting with her personality chip. She's using humor to build a better rapport with subjects. Still needs some work. To begin, please tell me your name. All right. My name is Jenny LeClue. Welcome, Jenny LeClue. I am ready to detect. Please speak a truth or a lie. Okay, I guess let's lie. I hold the world record for the longest fingernails. I think I broke it. It's okay. Her fuse just tripped. She gets very sensitive if you lie to her. Especially if it's a big lie. What? What? But don't worry. She'll reset in a minute. Interesting. Also, why would you put a personality chip in a lie detector? What if the, what if the detector does, tells lie itself?
What did you do? Oh, that's just Maggie. She helps me find things I've dropped on the floor. Why do you have a man's ring? Yeah, fine. We, she trusted us, so may as well trust her. It belonged to... Uh, it belonged to a friend. I'm taking care of it for him. But that doesn't make any sense. I'm telling you the truth. No, I mean, why would a ring made of gold stick to a magnet? Unless... It's not gold. There's something more to it. Which oh. of these machines did you say could see inside things? The thermal imaging one. Excuse me, Tim. We need your help. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. My name is Tim. The thermal imaging machine. Metal. Plastic. Wood. There's nothing I can't see inside. Except, of course, your innermost thoughts. Look, I don't need a best friend. I just need him to examine the ring. Ouch. That hurt my feelings. Go easy on him. He's quite sensitive. Is everything sensitive in here? Ugh. Hi, Tim. Nice to meet you. Oh, how wonderful it is to meet you, my new friend. How can I be of service? I need you to look inside something for me. I'd be delighted to. Please place the object on my soft, velvety platform. Come to me, tiny object of vast mystery and import. Reveal to me your deepest secrets. Swim in my warm bath of gamma rays. I'm peering deeply inside you. What's that? Deeper still. I've never seen one of those before. Fascinating. All the wonders I have seen. Well, spit it out already. One moment, please, while I paint you a picture of the journey we just shared. Yeah. What I is... knew there was something special about this ring. It's full of tiny cogs and gears. I've never seen such intricate craftsmanship. I need to borrow your microscope. Hmm. Tiny buttons hidden in plain sight. Clever. I wonder what they do. Oh, uh, yeah. Look at this. Oh. Oh. Okay, it's an order. Opened up like a flower. Looks more like a sheriff's badge to me. Why would the Dean have a ring like this? Whatever its true purpose, one thing was clear. This ring was important. Important enough to kill for? Dean Strasbury. What were you involved in? Did you say Dean Strasbury? Whose ring is that really? Susie had entrusted her deepest, darkest secret to Jenny. The least Jenny could do was be honest with her. Hmm. Fine then. It's the Dean's ring. Well, it was. You stole the Dean's ring? Technically, I found it. Jenny! You've got to turn that into the police! It could be important evidence! Considering the police think my mom is the Dean's murderer, I certainly won't be handing it over to them. But what if they ask me about it? I can't lie to them. I'm a terrible liar. Blackmail, yeah. Who's <laughs> to blackmail after you told her you won't say anything? It's not lying. It's just leaving out the parts that don't concern them. I can't go to jail. My parents will disown me, and my reputation will be ruined. No one's going to jail, as long as we protect each other. I'll keep your secret. You keep mine. Like, friends. That, no, that literally sounds like a deal, like blackmail or something. Well, not blackmail, that, that does not sound like friends. Sure. Now go back to whatever mad science experiment you were doing. I've got a window to open. Right. Well then. I guess let us move this. What does this do?
Yeah. That stupid robot just tried to kill me. Oh, be careful. Claude is very fragile. Fragile? It's enormous. I haven't finished calibrating him yet. If you want to help, get him to pick some things up and put them down again. He needs the practice. Just don't pick up anything too heavy. All right. Everything seems to be working fine so far. But oh. with Claude. He's only a prototype and I'm out of replacement parts. Yeah, but they re but they reboot in like a, in like a few seconds anyways. I got it! In the back of Jenny's brilliant mind, a plan was forming. I know exactly how to get out of here. Right. How can I escape from Glatt's manor? Alright, we'll need three things. First off, the windows lock electromagnetically. As such, we need to destroy. We need to disable the power supply. Only thing is, when Judy K, um, it, when Judy K is lied to, she blows a fuse, as well as the robot arm when we pick something up that's too heavy. When I overload the robot arm, it sparks and fuses. When I lie to Judy Kate, she nearly overloads the power supply. So if I could overload them at the same time, then I might be able to short the power and open the window in the attic. But Jenny couldn't operate both machines by herself. Then that means <gasps> we have to ask for help. <sighs> Fine then. Susie? Yes? I need your... Asking Susie for help was worse than having a tooth pulled out. I need you to do something. Of course. What can I do to help? I didn't say I needed your help. Oh, sorry. I don't owe you anything. Okay, okay. What do you want me to do? Go stand by Judy, Kate. Uh, all right. But why? No time for questions. Just wait for my instructions. All right. Let's do this. Are you ready? Welcome back, Susie Glatz. I am ready to detect. Please speak a truth or a lie. Okay, I'm ready. What should I do now? Just hold on until I give the signal. Alright. The robot arm strained under the weight of the giant metal object. Okay, Susie. Tell a lie and make it a big one. Oh, okay. A big lie. Ooh, I've got just the thing. I'm wearing black socks. That was a lie. No, Susie, a big lie. Something terrible. I'm just no good at lying. Tell Judy Kate you killed Dean Strasberry. What? That's horrible. I can't say that. Do you want to help or not? Yes, but... Then hurry up and say it. Okay, okay. I killed the Dean? Louder! I killed the Dean. Bigger! I killed Dean Strasberry. Say it like you mean it! I murdered Dean Strasberry! I bashed his brains in! Now I danced on his grave! <laughs> wow. That was messed up. Oh my gosh, I'm a horrible person. As Susie Glatz contemplated every bad thing she'd ever done in her life, 
Jenny heard the unmistakable sound of success. There it is. It worked. Right. Well, we may as go well go and thank Susie for her help. What's over here? Let me guess another gallery item. Oh, a sticker, good. The kettle, okay. Now Oh never mind, she's gone catatonic. Let's go out the out window. You while my mom is trapped in jail for a crime she didn't commit. The real killer is still out there. Plus, if you're in pajamas, you could pretend like you're sleepwalking. And what if you find him? What then? Jenny paused. She hadn't thought that far ahead. Aren't you scared? Hmm. Probably. Of course Jenny was scared. But she would never admit that to Susie. <laughs> my mom always says, a great detective shows courage in the face of danger. Now is the time to be courageous. Well, let me help you. We can work out a plan together. Sorry, Susie, but I work alone. At least take this with you then. So we can stay in touch. Susie Talky, yeah? Sure, why not? Fine, I'll take it. Always good to have a friend in the back. Friend in the. I guess high play. Well. Not high places, but yeah, it's always good to have a backup dancer. That sounds wrong. Whatever. But don't call me. I'll call you. Okay. Good luck. And be careful. There's still a killer out there. I'll be fine. Jenny, you won't tell anyone about my lab, right? Only if you cover for me. Of course. I'm always here for you. We're going to be best friends, Jenny LeClue. I just know it. Sure. Right after I sign up for cheerleading. To catch a real killer, Jenny needed her detective gear. But that was at home, across town and swarming with police. It wasn't wise to travel through town after curfew. To avoid being caught, she'd have to find another way home. Excellent, thought Jenny. Time to exercise my sneaking muscles. Alright, All right. the game saved us now, so I think that's where we'll end things for now. I know it's coming up next, and I imagine it's going to be another long section, so... Yeah, I guess I'll kind of end things here. Um, so we did a lot this time around. We basically went through that whole section. I thought it would, I thought it would take us like at least an, at least like an episode and like a little bit of the next one, but... No, we were able to, we were able to do everything, so... That's good. Um... Yeah, so I guess that's it. I guess next time we will find our way home. I don't exactly know how. I mean, according to the... Ooh, we're adventurer now. Interesting. According to the map... Well, actually, no. There's no real place saying the where the glass residence was, was there? No. Oh, well. Anyways... That's it for now, so, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.